Hi. So um, it's good to see all of you. I hope you all had a good long weekend. I worked. Did you guys work? No? Good. Good for you guys. Um, I'd like to tell you what I'd like to do today. I'd like for us to share um, the ads. Those of you willing to share analyzing the ad, discuss if you stumbled a little bit. Um, at the end of sharing the ads, I want to uh, review the workflow in InDesign because raise your hand if it, InDesign was a struggle for you. Raise it high so I can see. Just get honest with this. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to get you more comfortable with the software. It's like I said, um, all of you are, there's a certain element of um, mastery you're supposed to have in this class over the software. So I want to make sure all of you are comfortable with it and in the meantime those of you who might have some mastery with the software might learn some new flow um, with the software. Hopefully you will. <clears throat> um, so I want to share analyzing the ads. I would love for you to share your inspiration um, would you guys like to see each other's inspiration on the Google Drives? Pardon me? You mean the design archive? Yeah, exactly, the design archive. Raise your hand if you'd like to share that, like you'd like to see other people's stuff. Raise your hands high. Okay, all right. I mean, if you're not interested, we're not going to do it. But if you're interested, let's do it and get amped up a little bit, right? Because who knows what will come out of it. Okay, then the other thing is, is I'd like to... Sh um, Demonstrate your next assignment, which is designing with a grid and creating thumbnails, okay? And introduce you. It's a pretty easy project, honestly, and there's a few ways to go about it, and I want to demystify it for you. And um, then on Thursday, I'll, enter, I'll end up introducing your new bigger project coming up, okay? Is that all work for all of you? So let me just pull up the form right now. Let's just get started. And um, here's the forum of people who posted. The forum gets graded. So um, it gets graded in terms of participation. So it's important for you to post to it. If you don't post to it and you don't make your work available, um, there's going to be a hole there. Hi there. Tell me your name again. Brooks. Brooks. Thank you. OK. So here's who's posted. Who wants to come up and just? chat about what you did for your ad. Okay, Lori, come start. So I'm going to let you navigate it. Come on up. Oh, good. It posted because you did. The reason Hirsch displays instead of um, a JPEG, so you get the, the big old monster chair. The chair. Um, so the reason Hirsch displays is you posted a couple JPEGs, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's why it shows up. If you post a PDF, it won't display in the browser. We'd have to download it and show it. Which is okay. I think it said that you're supposed to post JPEG. You you are supposed to. I know it says so. The instructions say so, but I don't know how many people did or didn't follow that. So, so just tell us about what you found and what you learned and how you did. And if you have questions of her, ask. Okay. Um. So I found a pretty like simple ad that um, selling coffee, coffee beans or something. And I don't really know what to say. I mean, it's pretty simple, like, uh, where, like, they want the eye to go just because the coffee, the coffee mug is actually, like, pointing at, um, so, like, you see the white thing because it's white against black, and your eye always sees the lighter thing, obviously. So, yeah. And then it just goes from on to off. I had a 2.5 at the off, and I don't know why it didn't show up there. It's okay. Okay, um, so let's let's talk about some design terms. So is this a symmetrical design or asymmetrical design? Is it balanced or not balanced? Symmetrical. symmetrical. Symmetrical, right. Okay, and what's the color palette used in the ad? So let's get rid of all that red. What's the color palette used in the ad? Black and white, right. And there's a little bit of color, and what's the color? The little bit of color. Brown. Yeah, the coffee, right? So it's pretty straightforward. They're not doing a lot. They're not making a lot of noise. They're just real clean with it. Um, 
Plus, look at the contrast. So there's a few things. Look at the contrast between the really embellished or ornate logo with all that fine, flourishy stuff going on and the completely ordinary white mug, right? So think about it. You know, think about all the mugs you got in your cupboard. You all could do any kind of mug. It could say, you know, best soccer player in the world. It could be bone china with little pink flowers on it. But this designer made a decision to limit their color palette. So color as a design element. They decided to use a symmetrical design for balance. They used a lot of white space, even though this background here <coughs> is black. It's really considered white space. It's negative space. There's nothing going on in it. So they use that to accentuate the two most important things, coffee, black, and blaze. That's it. Yes? No, I have a question about white space. Yeah. What if instead of black, it was textured like, uh, like wood, you know, like a table? Like wood? Would that be considered white space? That's a really good question. Yeah, basically any space that's kind of um, not doing anything, creating space is considered white space. White space is usually kind of a negative space where it starts to become basically a nothing. And it depends how busy the wood is. Wood is a really busy grain. You pick something that's busy, and it might have nails in it, and might have stripes from wood planks. And then we might have a whole different conversation about it, right? Because then we might be talking less about negative space and we'll be talking a lot more about texture because wood brings texture and an organic quality and a natural quality and an earthy quality and now you're talking about a different a whole different vibe so it's a good question so it really depends on how it's used it was a good question um and tell me did you do that in illustrator or in design your in in design yeah okay yeah and it's pretty simple i did it like Kind of quick and yeah. just like because okay. it, it wasn't really too much. Too it wasn't busy. designed to torture you guys. It was designed to get you into a flow and observations. So great, thank you. Who's coming next? Okay, come on up, and then you'll go next, John. Okay, so you know how to navigate out of there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I didn't post JPEG. Okay, we'll look at your PDF. And let's look at your PDF through Acrobat, okay? It probably will open that way, but let's find out. There we go. Is that, that's not Acrobat. Is it? That's okay, it's fine. It's in the browser, it's okay. Okay. That's my ad I chose. Um, I thought it was clever because the ants are, it's a sugar free lollipop ad, so the ants aren't going near the lollipop. Uh, that's the flow. When you first look at it, you see the lollipop. You follow the ants into the logo. And then that's my. It's fine. Can't really see it on, this, but on the screen. It's a little you have a dark. soft, soft gray. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, so talk about what you observe. So rather than me speak up, so Brendan, you're good at observing stuff. Give us a shot. What do you observe? You can't be wrong if you're observing it, right? I guess, like, I know, I saw it in the same view when it was in. That, like, first the lollipop pops out, it's bright, it's something that sticks out, it doesn't really fit in, like, in nature. Uh -huh. And then, like, the ants, because there's lots of things like that. I know, it's a bit. And what do the trail of ants do? What does it serve? Yeah, but what did the trail do? What did the trail lead you to? Oh, the Shupa. What's the idea of the Shupa? Yeah. Shupa trip. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Took you to the logo. Beautiful. I also want to point out some other observations. That's great. I want to point out a couple other things that I'm just thinking about. So again, this could be a Tootsie Pop. You guys all know Tootsie Pops, right? They're all one color, kind of ordinary looking. Okay, so let's look at this. So I'm looking at the angle of the stick and the angle of the grass, both at an angle. I'm looking at the path here, and I'm looking at the wiggly logo, right, the scalloped edges, and I'm kind of looking at the wiggly stripes on the lollipop, which to me kind of mirror each other, the angles, 
And the scallops, what do you think? Am I stretching it or is it work for you guys? Maybe, right? And it's a pretty limited color palette. You take away your, reds, your red and you've got a kind of desaturated background, right? Desaturated here, desaturated grass. It's not popping perky green, it's kind of desaturated. <coughs> so mostly your color is red and red. Lollipop's red, logo's red. There you go. Right? So just make these ob observations and just store them in your brain. As you start to develop design um, layouts, you'll think of using these different design elements and techniques to draw attention and create a difference. It was a nice work. Nice work. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, so, I found a really old TWA ad. Um, I might bring up my PDF just to so I can get the actual ad a little bigger. Um, so that was the ad, um, and what what I found was that you focused here first, and then kind of follow her pointing to the logo, and then you have these things uh, also kind of pointing up to here, which if you, you know, read from right to left, then, I mean, left to right, then you naturally follow the TWA logo. And the fact that it's bright red or, you know, relatively bright red um, kind of draws the eye to it. Um, so that was my, you know, made it, I just wanted to show that because it was kind of faded on this thing. But so one, uh, two, it, it almost kind of jumped straight to three and these are kind of just supporting, looking in that direction. And um, I found it to be pretty relatively simple. All you really have is the logo, the this kind of secondary pointer, and the woman pointing. So I just simplified it way down. Um, and I thought that the woman was supposed to be like the main eye-catching thing to draw you into it to look. So I left her as a recognizable figure rather than an abstract shape. You guys have observed anything else? Anybody else got some thoughts about it? Um, is it Roxanne? Mm -hmm. Yeah, any thoughts? Um, can we go back to the PDF with the oh. ad on it? Yeah. It's got a very nice um, color palette. Like, like I mean, it is, it's painted, right? It's vintage, yeah. Yeah, it's so vintage since it's one. vintage, it's got that like painterly quality to it. Uh huh. Yeah, the red is a nice contrast too because most of the work is like shades of blues and a little bit of bluish gray, but then like the um, the red on the wings and the red of the name pops out to you. Mm -hmm. So the accent color in the ad is the red, so that's what pops. The other thing I observe, even if you look, can we go to your illustration? You know, so just if you look at the illustration, and, and the way John described it, it's basically taking you into this circle, right? Okay, here's a lady, she's smiling at you, come right on my TWA airplane, the wings are going back to her pretty face, and you just keep circling around, right? That's all, it's just straightforward, and good observations, simple shapes, um, that's good, nice work. Thank you, who else wants to do it? Um, um, Guillermo and then Anusha, you come up. And if you guys are at your computers, will you just like just put them to sleep, please? I'd appreciate it. Right, so I chose this uh, ad from a knife company maker, uh, which is called WMF. And well, the basic idea of the ad is that the knives are so sharp that, you know, cuts the cutting board even, I don't know. And I like how, well, the first thing that my eye sees, of course, is a carrot and the cutting board. And then that, after that, it, I go to the little knife on the bottom that points out at the logo, which I think is smart. And then the little text that you can't really read it because it's too small, but it says sharps. Uh, I, don't, I can't even read it here. Anyways. And this is the question that I had about the oh, white the space. Yeah, I wasn't sure because it's a 
texture that's similar. It's kind of like a kitchen counter or something. Yeah. And also the use of gray tones that make the carrot uh, pop out with the uh, cutting board. And this is the design I did. That's great. Who's got comments for Guillermo? Any observations? You got it? Ryan, right? Yeah. Got any yeah, comments? Um, it looks really good. I, I like the ads. Pretty clever. And uh, it's pretty thorough, too. You did a good job of getting every point. It's a pretty simple ad, too, which is, which is nice. Um, I don't know. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it looks good, though. So your your comment, Guillermo, about white space, that would be white space. Mm -hmm. So not it adds texture, which adds mm -hmm. dimension for sure. Um, but it serves as white space. Right. It's a really clean page. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, um, as designers, you're gonna come to learn that different logo designs require different color usage. Meaning, you know, you look at the carrot and don't you want that logo just to be orange? just for it to pop so we could see the logo better. That's what I want it to be anyway. But maybe that logo never shows up in color and we're stuck with a black and white logo. So then we have to think, how do we make a logo work successfully? Just things to think about. I have to tell you though, um, don't you all want that art like hanging in your kitchen? <laughs> yeah? So. This is the thing that I love actually about distilling down ads and photographs and compositions. When you look at them and when they're really strong compositions, you get to look at it and you, you totally get it. Like, okay, sharp knife, something important going on here, and man, I just cut through this whole thing. I mean, it is, you didn't need to read the words in, in your mm -hmm. ad, right? Exactly. It, was a, it was a fun ad to pick. So. Yeah. I love looking at compositions of ads and distilling them down to abstractions because when they're done well, um, meaning the ad's done well and certainly your representation of it, um, you get to simplify it. You just get to see the layout and the composition and it's powerful. Um, and the fact that you didn't choose to represent the texture means the texture became invisible to you. Mm -hmm. So that was white space, yep. right? Yep. Um, did you do that in InDesign or Illustrator? I did it in Illustrator. I started doing it here in InDesign, but I, I'm going to buy it, I promise, the software. Okay. Did you hear it? It's on video, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice work. Nice work. Right. Okay. And, um, yeah, Misha, come on up. You know how to navigate your way back? <laughs> Um, is it clear? Yeah. Okay. So I chose the Mercedes Benz ad, and what really attracted um, me to it was that it's extremely clever because it's use it, it uses um, illusion in its image, and uh, illusion is something which uh, interests the human eye. That's what I feel. So the first thing that uh, my eye went to was the nose. Uh, if you look at the entire uh, composition, you will see that there's um, very neutral colors used, so there's mostly gray. And the only thing that pops out is the skin color, and even in that skin, the nose is really bulging out. And uh, so the first thing that you see is the nose, and then you notice the outline, and you see that it's uh, facing towards the left. And then, when, and then your eye next goes to the um, image's eye, which is pointing towards the left. So you figure out that it, it's supposed to be uh, you know, looking straight, but it's not. And, uh, and then that's when you look at the whole uh, face. And then the fourth thing that you see is the message, which says, look to the side without looking to the side, blind spot assist from Mercedes-Benz. So uh, we all drive cars, and we know, you know when you have to check a bl blind spot, you need to look over your shoulder. But with this feature of the car, you don't need to do that because they obviously have that assistance there. And then in the end, it goes towards the logo. And uh, this was my composition. I forgot to take off the numbers. That's so. OK. <laughs> so comments for Anusha's ad. Can you go back to your ad? Yeah. Any thoughts on anybody's part? 
really eye-catching that Picasso like different perspectives. Yeah. It really makes you look twice. It's kind of creepy, right? <laughs> um, you know, it's a real it's an interesting ad. So Nusha said it's desaturated, not lots of color, right? Real simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lots of white space. It's really interesting. I don't know if it's you guys just didn't want to do anything complicated in your abstraction, or you all found these incredibly simple ads, right? Um, I probably would have done exactly the same, so don't get me wrong. I look at this, though, and as I'm watching it, I, as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking about two things. One is it, it's a creepy-looking face, and the nose is front, frontal, right? The shoulder is frontal, mm -hmm. facing front. But all the other elements of the ad are in profile, except for the ear. The ear is also frontal. But what I wondered is, and, and it's just, uh, I'm posing the question in my head. I'm wondering why they didn't flop the face so it was, the eye was facing the headline. Mm. I'm wondering. I don't, I don't know. I mean, but then I think, okay, well, the slope of the shoulder faces, the, you know, takes our eye to the logo. Right? It does that. I mean, you went like this. You went swoop. Yeah. Yeah. You, you swooped that way, which is fine, <coughs> which is what happened. <coughs> but mostly I'm like this, and then I kind of, I get stuck here. I get in this like little horror mode, like, <laughs> right? But so then I wonder if this eye, if this whole face were flopped and the nose stayed there, would it send us to the message and still leave the shoulder here? To the logo. I don't know. It's just a curiosity. So if I were playing, if I were tinkering around as a designer, I might consider that. In other words, where are you going to carry our eye? So anyway, nice work with it. Great job. Thank you. Anybody else want to come up? Okay, come on, Chris. Great. So I didn't follow instructions. Sorry. Oh, you're a renegade. Yeah. So I took this ad, sorry, the res of the image is bad. And I think it really speaks to the nature of these kinds of ads in general. Because I, I mentioned when I introduced myself, I'm more on the environmental side, especially as far as like how I want my style and design to go towards. And for some reason, a lot of these ads are just very either low res or they're just you know, unless it's WWF doing like a, a really good like artistic piece, but those were too simple. This one I felt had like a pretty captivating image as far as like using the young girl and the message, which is, you know, I'm not a science experiment, so it's like GMOs and whatnot are still relatively new as far as research is concerned, and now you have this young child like being the voice of that. I think that was pretty strong. But still, you know, it's still lacking. You have this weird little like opaque thing here there's no there's no logo so I'm not certain whether the, the organization was even conscious of like trying to incorporate their logo into the composition here but it's still as as it still kind of goes so for me I started with the girl's head and then went down to the sign and you'd think that it stops at the the little message here but I personally think that this guy is kind of constantly bringing it full circle so I mean I shaped it like a weird rectangle or whatever, but it is, in a lot of senses, it circulates back on itself. And, um, yeah, so go down, and then, yeah, I just made my, simplified my extraction, abstraction. So it's nothing too cohesive, but that's also the way that the ad is. It's not, it's not that well put together, but it works. It still kind of flows, and I use the darker tones to be the things that, like, stand out the most, like the girl's head, the sign, and then the little sign. And here you have like the legs and whatnot, which kind of, in a lot of ways, this is like a grid type ad where it's like all lined up on the right, comes to the left. But I don't know, this little caterpillar like thing, this little flow kind of breaks the grid. Well, yeah, actually, it's nice that you brought up the idea of grids. It's, I'm, I'm not going to use this ad to talk about grids. I'm going to make mm. grids really simple because yeah. we'll get into that today. But. But you're right. I mean, what you did was this flow you described is what happens with your abstract shapes, right? Yeah. And um, you you created, you know, a story protagonist, right? The little girl is your protagonist. Here's my message. Here's what I'm talking about, GMOs. And I got a whole bunch of people to back me, meaning 
we're, we are a collective. We have a voice. We, you know, we've gathered. We've created a, a power. So um, it's great. You did a nice abstraction on it, too. That was great. Great simplification. Yeah, definitely. Very clean. It's just, I don't know why these ads are like that. They're just really boring. You think they're boring? I think it's, yeah, I think it's boring. And, and it could have been just like a little more crispy. You know, yeah, like oh. Environmental ads aren't that like. So you thought that the people image was really <clears throat> poor resolution. Well, the, the image is good, but yeah, the resolution's bad. Right. The way that, I mean. But she wasn't bad resolution. Right. It was focused on her. Right, yeah, All the rest. I'm surprised that she wasn't in focus and everybody else not in focus. Yeah. To even take it, to create some more space so she stands out more. So. Just something to think about. Thanks, Chris. Was that attached to something in here? Or was that just to split out? It seems like it doesn't like, have any. It's incomplete? Yeah. No yeah, call to action. So many like, it's, like that. It just said, like, this just says, like, like, be it GMO, like we want to boycott GMOs. It doesn't right. give the viewer like, any idea how to join in or like, to right. do anything. There's no action. Right. Most ads, particularly those kind, have a call to action of some sort. Yeah. Call us, donate money, yeah, like go to our website. Like a right. logo or a brand or yeah. anything. It's just yeah. Well, but you found it on the internet, right? Yeah. So who knows what yeah. it was? It could have been a part of an annual report, for all we know, and yeah. you just found the graphic. But it served the purpose for the, yeah. for the layout. Anybody else want to come up? No? OK. Well, I appreciate you guys sharing. I'm not going to be so. Um, I'm not going to be so gentle with sharing, you know. I'll pretty soon I'll start calling you guys up. But um, who'd like to start then? Who didn't do the ad? Sharing your inspiration from other artists. Now I'll call you up if you don't volunteer. So you may as well just step up and get it over with. There you go. Good job. Okay. There you go. Hi. Right. You don't have to talk about all of them. Pick your favorite if you remember. Okay. Or something that surprised you or was particularly uh, something. Let's okay. see if this link works. Okay. Um, mine is like a various mix. Like there's a couple of posters, um, some 3D printed stuff. I don't know whether that counted or not, but it's something that like I really enjoy looking at. So. Um, so pick one to talk about it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with this one. I really enjoyed this um, poster. This is for some uh, electronic band of some sort. And I just really enjoy like the colors and, and um, the patterns that they use in the background. And it's just, yeah, I really enjoy looking at it. So do you know how to create that? Um, I don't tell me about your your design experience if you knew how to create something like that if you know how to create something like that not as artfully but like I would know how to put on the oh, I don't know what they're called I'm sorry the terms for point it. to it um, like just like the repeating um, pattern oh the tone uh, yeah the tone the half tone yeah. dots yeah that so kind of thing can you there. circle the half tone dots right now with your mouse just so people can see it uh, just run your mouse over it. So you see the little dots also in the type at the top, everybody? Can you all see that? Those are, that's a halftone pattern. So somebody created that type, the outline of that type. And then in Photoshop, there's a filter that you could select with a color, fill it with like a yellow, let's say, or make a yellow to take gradient. Do you guys know how to make gradients? Who doesn't know how to make a gradient? Raise your hand. Okay. I'll show you gradients. Um, you take your gradient, and in Photoshop, you can add those dots in. Those are called halftone dots. They're mimicking comic books, right? You all see that in comic books? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So you like that effect. You like neon colors. Yeah. And you like... Um, it's also like, um, it's got that sort of like illustrative drawn style to it even though like it's a vector image yeah okay so let's let's talk about this I want to dissect some art sometimes just so you start to get familiar with ways to think about it because not your next assignment but your one after that you're gonna to have to create original artwork and I don't want you guys to have fear 
I want you to say, oh, it's doable, okay? So let's say you go to, a, uh, well, let's face it, it can't be too hard to draw a happy face, right? You all figured that one out. But they obviously added an edge to it. But here, um, they might have drawn circles around an eye, and in Photoshop, there's a liquify tool. Anybody ever played with a liquify tool? It's a liquify tool where basically you could take that circle, draw a circle around it that's just a ring, and use your mouse and tug on it. And it would make this kind of liquidy, saggy looking thing with a circle. So the reason why I want to talk about it <coughs> is hopefully during class time, if there's a skill that you don't have but you want to pull something off, you want to be successful at it, you can say, how can I do that? So that means you're going to have to bring your concepts drawn out, sketched out to class, okay? Rough sketches so you can communicate it and then we can help you do it. So you learn different softwares and ways to focus. Um, who knows where to download free fonts? Okay, there's da font, D-A font, or you Google free fonts and you can download them and you can put in keywords like spiky or frightening or... Um, Horror. Horror, thank you. Right, so you can download free fonts. Fonts don't come filled with yellow and pink, but you can fill them with yellow and pink with a gradient. All right? Yeah. You should yeah. also be, if uh, you have the Adobe Creative Suite, it gives you access to a bunch of fonts that, like, I forget what the exact thing is, but it's one of the things that they give to you. As yes, as Typekit, right? Yeah. It's now yeah. Typekit. Type yeah. yeah, thank you for that, Sam. Yeah, Adobe, if you, if you are purchasing the Adobe software, um, renting it monthly, um, yes, you get a whole slew of fonts. You get a whole slew of fonts. And, and you will all run into some snags with the free downloadable fonts that I will help you as we come with projects work with. Okay? All right. Um, did you find the artist? Or who did this? Or uh, what it's for? I found the artist. I found their Flickr account. This is uh -huh. an older poster they did, uh -huh. but um, this was just for some electronic band. So you like you like this style? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, that's cool. You're gonna have fun with your big drawing project, which is a mobile game design. Did you see that? Oh, I think I saw a little bit of that. Yeah. 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 So it'll be fun. Nice. Right. Thank you. You want to come share? Brooks, did you do it? I have not. Yet. Not yet. And Sam, did you get to it? I have the design archive, not to add. Yeah, design archive. Right. This is it. Right, so I'll just go over the first one. This is from a, a series this one designer was doing called 52 Bad Dudes, where over the course of a year he was going to draw a new, uh, he would try to stick it within pop culture, but a new figure every week. So he released them weekly. And then so this is one of my, the one here is one of my favorites. And he did like a lot of pop culture references. Uh, and this one's really cool because if, You've, this is from Fight Club, and if you've seen, you know, the plot twist at the end of him, you can see seeing a, he has the similarities between the two characters. So they're both bleeding from their forehead at the same spot. They have like same, uh, they, it's they have like because the in the movie the, it turns out that these two characters are the same person, and this is a very, like I like the way that he subtly shows it because it's it serves to just like. Looks like it's just the two things, and they have a quote at the bottom that is something their character would, like something their character says in the movie. And then once you understand what's going on behind it, you can look at and start seeing the similarities between the two pictures. So. And, and are you an artist? Are you a fine artist? I'm not. Um, so you like this compositionally and concept-wise. But it's not a style you'd be able to emulate or wish to emulate. Not in I could do like draw on the the concept of it, but not in the like this exact execution. 
mine would be much more like abstract and the idea of uh, if you're doing design to keep uh, certain things similar so it's indicating to the whoever looking at them or using them that they're related. And that's the part you like? Yeah. Was the similarities and, and the aspect? Yeah. You know, if you have the perspective. And how I, I personally just like the way that they design these pictures. Uh, the, their skin is kind of off and it's, I don't, I don't so know So is there more in this series that we can see? Yeah. Let's see if this works. So you took <clears> us to this guy's uh, Tumblr page? Yes. Yeah, this is where he has all the... And so he was doing stuff from Breaking Bad. Did you stumble on it? I don't know. I found. I remember. I found this like when he was doing it back in 2011. I think a friend of mine just sent it to me. Or I found one of the pictures. Find what he is. This is another one that I really liked that he did, which is reference to uh, Reservoir Dogs. It's a scene where Michael Madsen cuts a guy's ear off with a razor blade. I'm so glad I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great movie. Yeah. Is it a great movie? I, well, really? and Everybody say, yeah? Like, yeah. I'm missing the moment? You know, <laughs> I forget. I think it's the Almond Brothers, the song Stuck in the Middle with You. Yeah. 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 That he does it, like, very cheerfully to that song. Yeah. Um, and it's just, like, you can tell, like, chair? he's... What's the chair? What's the chair about? That's, uh, that's the guy. You can, if you zoom in, you can see that the guy was tied to a chair, and he, he has a little red blood spot coming down uh, from... Yeah. Okay. And also, his, <laughs> right here, it, this set, this razor blade has uh, engraved stuck in the middle with you. Oh. So. So this is very complete. There is, um, this is awesome. There's, it, I teach, uh, or I, I used to, um, well, Lori knows. I used to teach the media design class, and one of the projects was um, taking an image that's <clears throat> iconic and creating a poster out of it. And this is completely that. And to use just a few words to add meaning to it. Remember that project? And this is totally it. So is that an original composition, or is that composition yeah. from a photograph? No, as far like as far as I know, this is all like wow. for all of this things he created everything from himself. And it's the similar, uh, you can see the the shading how it, it looks similar to the Fight Club one. Yeah. Yes. Like he well, that's had his style, yeah. Well, he did for like some of them, like the the Breaking Bad one that they had. They used a much more like crisp lines and like right. Like <coughs> things are here, and I'm not as big of a fan as that one. Yeah. So you like the watercolory yeah layer effect. So where the other one's kind of like a silk screen with one thing in it. Who's this? Uh, this is from. Uh, Inception. Uh, so you can see the guys <coughs> walking on a infinite stair stairway. Right. Uh, something very MC Escherish. Yes. Cool. You guys yeah. like that? Fun to see other people's stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> so I'll start to come up. I can share. Okay. <laughs> come share. That'd be great. Um, so I chose, I'm a big fan of like simplicity and like just not too much going on. So all mine are pretty like simple and so you know. And I, I already did the ones for next week too, so that's why it's so many here. But I think this one is my favorite one just because I think... It's like so simple and so perfectly made. It's just like, what? Um, How many people in here think they could pull that off design wise? Come on, you guys. Like everybody, right? They could actually they physically do that. But I don't actually, know that I actually physically yeah. just create the design. Yeah. And, and the bottom line is it's all about concept, it's all about brainstorming a clever concept. And what you want to say. Yeah. That's really clever. It is. And I think the A is like really like. It's pretty brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. 
And I really, just like a simple, like the, the like darker gradient just to make it look like it actually like it's like from the depth. Yeah. yeah. That's great. It's genius. I can show you like just because like the other ones are like really easy to do as well. Well, it's just, like, not, don't say they're easy. They're it, not, it's, you know, coming up with the concepts, the hardest thing of all. Right? Yeah, exactly. Coming up, but they're like easy to like make. You like the simplicity of the design. Yeah. Right. And yeah, but, but let's go back to that one for a second. Okay, so it appears easy, but who could pull off that broom in original artwork? And how would you pull it off, Roxanne? Um, drawing from still life. Drawing. Yeah. Hand drawing it. Yeah. Okay. And Chris, your hand went up, right? What would you do? Yeah, I can't tell how, what it, how good it is from this far back, but if it's an image, I just probably go from Photoshop. And then once my image is looks you know pink and nice and textured in mine I just go to InDesign because it looks like that that side stuff is like a brush you could use I mean I guess you could use it yeah so you tinker with it in Photoshop yeah so I, maybe you buy a broom photo and yeah. then use filters and yeah. and smears and right. opacities <coughs> okay I think and what about the background that. texture I'm always fascinated how people come up with their background textures anybody got an idea yeah okay. right there using like a brush um, shadow with a so a, a Photoshop brush yeah yeah Jay what were you gonna well, say well yeah that could basically be a, um, a Photoshop stroke like brush or whatever yeah because they have different ones or you can like download them and thank you for adding that you know you could download Photoshop brushes like grunge brushes for a grunge background and change the color and opacity and uh, Deviant Art is a website where you download brushes. And so if you guys make notes and you want me to demo any of this in this class, I will. Okay? So nobody assumes that you know anything, but you got to stop me and say, hey, could you show me how? Right? You all get that. All right. I mean, it's also really easy to just go, you can take a photo with like a low resolution photo just with your iPhone and something because you don't want the resolution, you just want the texture. So. Right. And just like add several layers of different. One of the things I want to I want to make note. Um, actually, this week in your book is a typography chapter. As a matter of fact, and I think I think that most students underestimate the power of good type, the power of good type placement, scale, relationship of the byline where it says by so and so, the name of the book cover, right? I mean, the author of the book or the story, and how the type sits letter by letter, current side by side. Those things make a difference. Um, they really enhance, you know, it's classic type. It's a classic story with kind of a contemporary cover, yeah? So those are things that we're going to look at and consider, because it's all part of the design work that you do, right? That's great. Thanks, Lori. That's great. Anybody else want to pull that up? Evelyn, you want to? Okay, I can go. Okay, after Evelyn. Oh. And then you'll go after her. Good. You can't hide in the back there. A lot of my pictures aren't necessarily ads, but more artwork that really inspires me. So. That's great. So I'm really into like surrealist art. Salvador Dali is like a really big inspiration to me. Um, I don't know, it just the way it looks, it really captures people's attention. Um, and there's also like really simple things, like this could easily be an ad for something. You could easily just put like words underneath the rows and it'll be really simple yet um, really artistic at the same time. And then there's also Raymond Pettibon, who if anyone knows who Black Flag is, the way he draws, um, it's all hand-drawn. So who, tell us about him. So, um, you... Do you guys know about him? Well, does anyone know Black Flag? <laughs> yeah. All right. So he's the artist for, like, most of their album covers and flyers and stuff. 
And the way he draws is usually, oh, you can't really see that. It's usually um, black and white and really like, um, you can just, you can tell it's hand drawn. And I like the, the realness to it that you can tell someone actually did it. And that's really an inspiration for me. I have this, oh, and also he designed the logo for Black Flag, which is kind of like the, the ad project that you made us do. It's very simple. It's just four um, rectangles, but if you look at it, it's actually like a waving flag. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. And then I have this in there mostly because she's kind of pointing to the ad. I actually used that one for my ad project. Did but, you? Yeah. <laughs> and you were inspired by it that you put it in here? Yeah. Because so she's, inspired, yeah. Cause she's basically the shape of an arrow and the top of her head points straight to the name of the company or whatever that is. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and also have, if anyone listens to Led Zeppelin, that's also surrealist, and this album cover art has always inspired me. <laughs> How old is that cover? I'm not exactly sure. I'm pretty sure it was the 70s. Yeah. Does anybody know that cover? Yeah. yeah. Houses of the Holy. How, How old is that cover, you think, you guys? Oh, uh, like, what is the late 60s? No, yeah, I was saying 70s. 70s. John, do you recognize that cover? Yeah, I recognize John. John. Lemon. <laughs> John Lemon. Do you recognize that cover? Nope. Oh, it's a Led Zeppelin cover. Okay, I just wondered what era it was, if you knew. I don't recognize the cover, and I like Led Zeppelin. <laughs> it's Houses of the Holy. Yeah. Uh, oh, great. So, yeah, that's my art grave. So, so your style is surrealism. Yeah, surrealism and also, like, punky, hand-drawn. That's my So, favorite. are there people in here who aren't familiar with surrealism? Okay, let's talk about it in a second. So, so can you do the fish? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that's like an inverse mermaid. Yeah, an inverse <laughs> mermaid, right, it's an inverse. So surrealism is obviously something that looks real, but it's an alteration of reality. Um, and Salvador Dali and Magritte and those are the two I always think of first. <laughs> who, who, else comes, who else can think of surrealist artists? Those are those are them. If we can look up more, but basically it was a time when everything was discordant in um, society, and surrealism is where you're altering a rela reality where you know, okay, it's raining men in coats, right? Um, and it's it's quite striking what the way that surrealism is created, how about the clocks, is you change the scale of something in relation to something else. So you defy our reality of it. Small. What's that? It's small. It's OK. It's small. And then we don't think of gold clocks, metal clocks, as something that would melt, right? Or be fabric or soft. And so that's um, different surrealist artists. And there's lots of different surrealist artists currently you know, or you were looking at the Zeppelin cover, which is kind of surreal too. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, that's great. Thanks, Evelyn. That's great. And that was the end of it. Quite interesting background uh, that the, the Chupa Chups logo that we want. Yes. Your, it was designed by Salvador Dali. It was designed, the logo was designed by Dali? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. It's a Spanish company. Was designed by Dolly. Yeah. yeah, well, you know what? No wonder there's ants in the ad. Have you ever seen a Dolly page? Oh, yeah, sure. Dolly's art has tons of ants in it. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What a trip. Look, I had no idea. I think it's bigger. Less? Okay, um, I'm a big fan of simplicity also. And I found. This is an Italian food magazine called Slow. I don't know if you can read it. La Rivista di Slow Food. Has anyone heard of that? Do you know the snail at the bottom? No. So, Slow. Slow, um, there's a slow food movement. Anybody heard of the slow food movement? The slow food movement started in Italy 
because they were going to build a McDonald's in a town, and the town revolted against them and would not let them build a McDonald's in the town. So they started the slow food movement, which is not about food growing at the pace of a snail, but it's about supporting local communities and um, local growers and things that grow naturally at that season in that climate in that town and then maximizing the use of that local food to support local communities. And it's an international slow growth movement and their logo is the snail. Exactly. That's, I just like the, I'm just drawn to the image first of all. Um, I like that the slow is written way at the top and then you kind of move straight down. It's really simplistic and then I love their little logos as snail and I think the whole design does a good job of mimicking or echoing the philosophy behind slow which is basically exactly what you described. Does it's, it take you to the whole magazine with that link? Do you know? Um, I don't think so. Is that a Paul symbol too? Like the two like, which one? Oh, I think the, that's just oh, the double, the, the double edition. I don't. Oh, okay. I, I know what you're saying. Um, where is I guess you could just. Oh, wait. No. Okay. No, you want me to just Google Slow Food Magazine? Yeah, let's see. see I'm just curious if the whole magazine keeps the same flavor consistent with the design. But this is going to be the American one. It's mm -hmm. USA, not Italy. Right? Is that other publications? Other slow food publications? Italian cheese. Do you want to just see other covers? Should I just do images? No, that's okay. I think we'll get lost okay. in this and never. Work. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Um, well, look, I just wonder. Anyway, I like the color palette. It's minimal, but kind of the overlapping lines reminds me of the ocean, too. Kind of like local food, using nature around you to support local farmers. Um, well, and so yeah. you like how the designer executed it is what you really do. You like the designer's style. Right? I like designer's style, and I think it does a good job of reflecting their philosophy of slow food. Yeah. It wouldn't be some complicated, busy design right. if it was, to me, that's more like processed food, right. like right. let's get it out there, this is like, okay, we're going to take things slower. It might be a less interesting to some people kind of advertisement, but my eyes attracted that. And I think what you didn't hear Lori ask you is if that, so Lori These was little wondering guys? if those two lines were like the pause button on a, oh. on your I, something, that, on your players. I don't know, that's a good point. It was a good point. Was good it might be yeah, the addition, but I, I mean, like even like how you were mentioning it, like fast food, there's like so many ingredients that are added on. Like this one seems more like organic and like, you know, less, uh, um, I don't know what word I'm trying to use, but uh, like, clean. you know what I mean? It's, this is like, it's more clean. Contrived. It's, it's, it's like, more, it's more um, pure. Yeah, you know? pure. It's not so many things added right. to it. Right. Kind of like the food, like what it's talking about. Yeah, I mean, you guys are all, you can see your natural observations are that um, you get the feel of what the message is by the design style, right? You got more shots? You want more? Uh, no. Okay. No? You like simple? You like clean? I like simple, clean, clean designs where you're, it just is more powerful to me than a, I do like some, you know, mm -hmm. more artistic things, but yeah. That's great. I think they're the That's most great. powerful. Thank you.
I just got the other one. So. <laughs> I'll find my way. Don't worry about it. I know it's really weird when you sit up here in front of somebody and you, someone, I mean, it, what do you do, right? <laughs> so um, I appreciate you all sharing. I just want to start by saying that. And I really like for us to all get um, more comfortable just sharing with one another and sharing our ideas because I think it's really, really valuable. Um, before I I do my thing, I I want to I want to demo some software stuff today, and I want to introduce your next project, and then I want to demo perhaps different ways to approach it. Okay. Um, but before I do that, did anybody struggle with anything, Paul? I want I want to address some of the things you had to deal with. But um, did anybody struggle with anything that they need help with? Brooks, yeah. Well, I just I can talk to you about it after, but for some reason, my ad code is like, Your ad code didn't work. I'm unable to, um, that's that's not a me. That's an administration thing. Okay. Just, yeah. So I think you have to go up for administration for that one. Um, but did anybody struggle with anything else? Okay. Yeah, Chris. Some people design archives, the links are like private. Oh, yeah. Make sure that your archive is public, that you can share it. Because when we first started, I think we had that with some first posts. So have a friend test your link, or somebody will write a note on the forum if they can't get in and pay attention, follow up. Yeah, Brendan. It's only visible for like SBCC students as well. So I did the thing where I was able to log it into my own Gmail account instead of being logged into the CC. So you're saying that you had to be an SBCC student to have you, access? You had to be logged into your city college Gmail. Like if you were logged into your own personal Gmail, which I prefer to use, yes. I wasn't able to view it. You couldn't view it. But if you were logged into SBCC, it worked. OK. OK, so make a, make a post to somebody if you're, if you're not able to do it while you're in the SBCC pipeline Gmail is what you're saying, right? Did I understand you right? Yeah? Okay. I, I'm personally not going to use the City College Gmail because I've already got mine established. So That's fine. It would be good if we just made it anyone who has the link. To be public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Personal Make it public. Question. I mean, it's not your original work, so it's not like you're betraying your own private copyrighted <laughs> something, right? Okay. All right, so if you're at your computers, I'd really love for you all to focus up here. I'm going to demo a few things. One is I, I'm going to launch InDesign. If you happen to have an older version of InDesign, it will not look the same as Creative Cloud. It won't look the same as uh, 6, InDesign Creative, Cloud, uh, InDesign Creative Cloud 6, version 6. Um, but you can do all of the same tasks. You can do all of the same tasks with InDesign. I want all of you, um, I'm going to demo with whatever I designed today. I'm going to demo packaging and I'm going to demo exporting to PDF files. By packaging your work when I demo it, it gathers your fonts, it gathers your InDesign document, it gathers your um, artwork all into one folder. A folder that has links, your graphics, fonts, and your InDesign native document. You want that because you're not going to want to lose your artwork. Let me help you be forward thinking. The work, if you're a graphic artist, or if you choose to ever reproduce this work in the form of a portfolio or share it, you're going to want to keep track of the work you do. The easiest way to keep track of the work you do is to always package it, which means bundle all those files I just said, put them in a folder, and label it properly and back it up, OK? Because, for example, I have students who take my portfolio class, and all the work they've done in their however many years on campus here, if they haven't backed it up, they find that they're going to put together a portfolio without any work or without the proper links. Or they might want to revise something because they submitted it as a PDF file, but they want to fix a typo or a color or a scale of something. Get, get powerful in backing up your work and making sure that you're organized about it, OK? That's my pep talk to you. Is there anybody who doesn't understand backing up to Google Drive or Dropbox or anything? OK. 
So let me, um, so we're now in InDesign, which just opened up here with our little friendly window. We're in the InDesign workspace, and I think if you remember how to change the workspace, we could go back to a workspace here and we'll call it, let's say, Vicky's Essential. And it should put everything back into its place. Um, so that's just launching InDesign. But let me come down here. I want to make sure that I'm addressing what our next project is. Our next project is um, a really simple one, okay? So you're going to do it. It should be done, like, by the end of this week. It should not take you a lot of time. Um, the project is designed to teach you how to create thumbnails for thinking through a concept. And my shorthand, I certainly want you to read this, but the shorthand is you're going to find an ad, another print ad, and you're going to redesign it. I think it's three different ways, I think. You'll yeah, read through it. Three, thank you. You'll redesign it three different ways. But let me, um, let me start by finding an ad and just talking it through up on the board instead of always being on the computer just for a second. So what do you want our ad to be about? Um, Phil, what should our ad be about? Flowers. Flowers? Flowers? Like dandelions. Dandelions. Okay. So, let's see what comes up. Here's a dandelion ad. Here's an ad right here. It's about, you're going to get blown away by serial data analyzers. Now, that's my favorite ad, right? Okay, so we're going to download this ad. So to download this ad, you all know how to do it. I'm going to click on my control key. I'm going to save the image as my dandelion ad. Come on, there we go. And, oh, and we'll put it right there. Okay. So basically what this does, this assignment, it says, it's asking you to do two things. One thing it's asking you to work with a grid layout. And another thing it's asking you to do is to redesign it using a grid layout, okay? So I'm gonna turn up the lights here so you can see what I'm drawing and wake you up and bravely demo something so you know that you're not the only one who can't draw, right? So here's our ad. Which, if you notice, the headline is not flush left, it's not flush right, it's not centered, it's just all over the place. The type isn't all the same size. It kind of bounces around, right? All right, the ad is kind of designed on a grid because one half of the ad has our serial data analyzer. That's hard to say. And the other half of our ad has our dandelion, which carries us across. And then we wonder what the flow of the ad is. And basically, I don't know about you, but I started at the headline went to the graphic and just came down the page. Kind of a boring ad, right? Wish we had picked something better, but we're going to just stay with it. So, and then, again, this type is flush right here. This type is flush left here. It's kind of like a designer's nightmare in my eyes. And then this type is justified in a really wide column <coughs> width, which is, I think, a huge no-no. And I'll tell you why. It's because nobody wants to read a big eight and a half inch width of type. It's hard. It's hard to follow the type all the way across that big long line. It's much easier to have a short column here and a short column here to read. And then you've got these two logos lined up flush right. And you've got this type flush left. It's kind of a really, it's kind of a tedious ad. But it has some negative space. Yeah? All right. So, we've got elements in this ad here. We've got, um, let, me, let me make these smaller, and I'll do them smaller. So the idea is to find an ad and consider all the ad elements and redesign it in a few different grid layouts. A grid layout would mean 
that if we divide, if we just divided this out, add up in even four columns. So half here, half here. So a column, a column, a column, a column. You'll notice they have a two column wide um, headline. They have a four column wide body of text. They have a two column wide graphic. They have a two column wide graphic that breaks it all the way across the page. And then they've totally broken the grid with a headline, which really kind of bothers me. It's unsettling to me. What do you bet you guys? Does it kind of bug you or no? Yeah. Kind of? OK. Do you think it's designed the way it was designed is because it has a very limited audience to it? And that's why the eight inch text to it is, I'm pretty sure that there will be really few who would want to get this product. Right. Well, what you're saying is it's a very limited market. It's a very right. technical market. And does it mean you have to be a bad designer? No, no, no. It doesn't mean that. <laughs> But the text, etc. somebody who's interested might want, to might, might want to read it. Yeah, you're right. But my attitude is do it right. And so here's our format. The ad format is it's tall. The ad format's been designed for us. It's a full page magazine ad. How interesting is that serial data analyzer? Do we have to see the whole thing? Maybe it could be off the edge of the page. Maybe all our hopes and dreams are here. And maybe we just have our headline here in our two columns. So here's our, here's our four column um, design. So maybe we have a two column headline here, our body text here, our body text here, and our dandelion creates open space. And we've now kind of bottom weighted our ad, right? With a positive negative space, because this would be lots of heavy white space, and everything might be weighted down here. And do we need to see the whole, the whole thing? The other thing might be, let's do a totally symmetrical ad. Here's our centered headline. Here's our box. Here's our dandelion blowing behind it as a background image ghosted. And then here is our centered text here. Totally centered ad. That's another way to lay it out. Um, another way might to be make it, let's, let me stick with our grid layout. Here's four column grid, right? So maybe our serial data analyzer sits right here. Here's the two logos. Here's our headline, covers all our four columns. Here's our body copy. And maybe the dandelion is a little background blowing in that direction, right? You get the idea? These are thumbnails of the ads, thinking about different ways to lay it out. Everybody gets that? That's basically what your assignment is going to be. You need to create three different ads, consider different ways to lay it out. And notice that the scale of our box stayed the same here and here, but it grew here. Maybe the box is the entire four columns of the ad here. The dandelion, which really just supports our headline of you're blown away, might be right here. Here's our box taking up all four columns, right? Here's our page. Here's our four column grid. And here's our headline, all flesh left. That's how you indicate flesh left. And then our body copy right here. Okay. So that's thumbnail sketches. It's not genius. Yeah, Paul. Um, so we're using a like an already existing ad uh -huh. to make the thumbnail sketch soft. But does that mean that like we have to use the exact same like, when we're ad elements? Yeah, but I mean like so it would be the exact same. Uh, You're not recreating dandelion. it. Dandelion. Yeah. It wouldn't be just like you can't you just use a different ad dandelion. No. And, like, the exact no. Same. Yeah. Use the same elements. And what you're basically going to do is think of different ways to lay it out. And you're going to think of different ways to lay it out in an organized grid and do it by thumbnails. And you can do it more explicitly than I did here. Yeah, Brenda. We don't have to use this one. Please no. <laughs> I picked the worst ad, didn't I? Um, I like your idea, Phil, of dandelions. That was a good idea, but I didn't like the ad I picked. So let me let me turn the light off here and let's let's find another ad. There's I gotta put you guys in a good mood. So because this always puts me in a good mood. Let me show you my favorite video of all time. And if you have ever had me for class, you're going to say, really, Vicki, again? 
but I have to show you this video because this is what I do all day long. And I have to go here and I have to view this uh, as me, not a student, so I can show it. There, return to my normal role. And then I got to pause our recording. So there we go. Okay. Let me pause. Yeah. You know what? Thank you for saying that. And thank yeah. you for indulging me. I had to do, do like an editorial spreadsheet last semester. So it was like kind of like playing with, you know, text fits here, but then it doesn't fit here. But then you want a picture to be larger. And it kind of did that whole process right you know what thank you would you guys like me to make that video available to you guys on on our website so you can play it to your heart's delight okay favorite, I will do that my favorite part is when after changing the header like a million times the designer just says screw it and makes it a bunch of placeholder X's <laughs> like it right. doesn't matter I'm just right. messing with this I, I love the video first off because I love the music and then a, a, a student of mine who is Italian said you know Vicky it's a really sad song so, does anybody speak Italian in here, in other words? Okay, well, anyway, I always get tickled by it because it makes me just happy. But it is how I spend my day, truthfully. It really is. So if you have an illusion about this brilliance of being a graphic artist, um, much of it is very formulaic in the regards to creating order on a page. The other part that I like about the video is the graphic artists alter the headline. Did you notice that? I need a three-word headline, a two-word headline, a five-word headline. They change the scale of it. They change the letting, space from baseline to baseline. All of those elements, as a graphic artist, I just finished a book, uploaded it today before I came to class, and I was given too much content for the pages for a client of mine. And I have found most clients, you might want to clear this with them, but most clients are really grateful when I edit these 12 page bios to fit the one paragraph we have. If I give it back to them, it puts more work on them. Usually we're smart enough to know how to pare things down. So again, with a headline, if you show a client that instead of four words, you can say something more powerfully in three words, help them with that, okay? So what I want to do, the reason why I show you that video, and I'll, and I'll make a point to um, post it here so you can play with it, um, is I want to show you how to work in InDesign to create grid layouts. And I'll find another ad, and I'll grab the components of the ad so I can show you how to play in InDesign doing it. Does that help you all? OK. Um, in my wildest dreams, you would create the three required or four required or 17 required thumbnail sketches and you would also do it in InDesign both and upload it as a PDF okay so in my wildest dreams I would draw on a piece of paper the thumbnails I take my iPhone I grab a snapshot because I don't have a scanner and I place my thumbnails organized on a page you get that all right so let me demo it for you I'll try and do it um, semi-quickly so you feel some order out of this. And um, let me find another ad, So, because we do not like that dandelion ad. So, new ad. Let's see what we got. Well, now we know what's important, right? Now we know what's selling. Um, Pardon me? Danny Trejo and the Brady Bunch. Where's the Brady Bunch? The third one. The third one? This one? No, oh, this one. Oh, oh, yeah. You're right. Okay. Let's see what we get if we do this. Images. I was just going to say that. Did you say that, Jay? Yeah, I think that's what I need to do. Let's 
Is there anything you guys want me to work with? You're going to want a few components to it. The add, oh, you know what? Let's, actually, I forgot. Let me just do it like this. Let me not, let me not torture us. Um, there are ad examples. I'm okay with you finding your own ads, but I'm sure that the ad examples here, I'm pretty sure there's ad examples to download. There's only one. There's only one ad yeah, example? I did it this one right here? Yeah. Somebody downloaded it? <coughs> Oh. Yeah, you can use that. I and here's a sample <coughs> of the assignment. Let's let's try and find something else. But what I want to call attention to here, if it's a serif font you're using, and you're dumbing up type, use a serif font. Notice the difference in this folktale font here on the left compared to the one on the right, which is a sans serif without the tails. Everybody understands serif and sans serif. Okay. Um, so differentiate it when you dummy up your type. Um, before there were computers, seriously, we would dummy all ads in thumbnails drawing the shape of each letter of type to create an ad mock-up. And with a computer, it's so easy for us to do. So let's see if we can find let me just go back again to um, let's see if I can find another one. It's a little more interesting. That's a cute card. Let's do this one. Okay, does that work? We have a car, we have a Jaguar. We have, um, oh, but this is just our cover, isn't it? In review. Best car ads. There. Which one should I do? Fiat, BMW? You guys don't care, do you? All right, we're gonna pick. Um, we're gonna pick the BMW. I need a headline. All right. It's not a very good ad, is it? No. It's kind of boring. Well, and it's kind of out of context, actually. I have to right. really like the BMW it. BMW one. Go to the BMW well, one. Yeah, what does that mean exactly? Uh, use, I don't you didn't yeah. know what like the lamppost was and oh, okay. they're just oh, this the BMW ad, they're just doing um, eating like I eat BMWs for breakfast or something. Yeah. <laughs> I think they just wanted to mimic their logo. I don't know. It, you know what? It eludes me, but we'll fake it. And we'll and we're going to use the headline. I eat BMWs for breakfast. Okay. I think that probably is it because it's a Jaguar ad, right? Yeah. Okay. There we go. And we're going to make a headline out of it. So this is what I'm going to do here. Um. I don't even need to fix that. Okay. So I'm going to make, so it's a wide ad, not tall. So we need to stick to the ad format, okay? Wide ad, not tall. It's a two-page spread is really what it looks like. So let's make an InDesign document. I'm going to make a new InDesign document, Command N for new. Turn off facing pages. My ad is going to be wide, not tall. It's going to be landscape design. I'm going to add default margins for my ad, which... I never like a half inch, so I tend to go bigger. And I'll make it three quarters of an inch. You should get accustomed to always building in an eighth of an inch bleed with your ad. And then I'm going to show you how to set up columns, OK? A grid. So I'm clicking OK. So again, if you're not familiar with InDesign, the outside pink line is your bleed, where an image trims off. It bleeds off the edge of the page and trims flush. You all get that, yeah? All right. This pink is a margin guide. 
if I view from my toolbox in what's called um, preview mode, I'm putting my cursor over the spot that should show up. It's not showing up. Preview would take away the margin guides, which is that's the image that prints. Down here at the bottom of my toolbox on the left, that's in the normal mode. <coughs> if I go to my layout, I can go to my margins and columns, and I can change my guidelines to view here. So I'm going to, there's a, there's a video for you to watch on the assignment link where some guy shows you how to make a three column layout, three columns, three rows, okay? In his video, he does not show you, let me come back to this, I just want to cruise through this video. In this video I'm talking about, and let me turn off the sound, um, in this video, he creates a three columns, three row grid for you to work with. And as he does that, he doesn't leave room for the space when you've got type side by side, which is gutters between your columns of text. I would rather, if you're going to do this in InDesign, I'd rather like you, I would rather that you learn how to set it up properly. So I'm going to show you in InDesign how to do it. It's fine. The idea is to understand the grid and organization and focal points of an ad. But if we jump down the page, you'll see him, maybe. He's showing you a, a layout that is on this three column grid and it's rotated. Feel free to watch it. Just keep in mind um, keeping your columns, um, I'm sorry, your gutters between your columns, okay? So let me pause that, come back to InDesign. So using, again, layout, margins, and columns, I get this dialog box, and I'm going to turn on my preview so you can see it change, and this is what a two-column layout is with guides. Here's a three-column, here's a four-column, okay? It's just that simple. Your gutter should never be that small, in my opinion, because you don't want your text crowding itself. So I often create my gutters at no less than a quarter of an inch. And I'll just leave it at that for the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to monkey around with this. There's a few ways you could do it. If you're into Photoshop, you can go back to the ad. Let me just open Photoshop, too. You can go back to the ad and separate at out the add elements, which might be easier for some of you. So Photoshop's launching right now. But right now, if I just go to File, go to Place, Command-D, I locate where I saved um, the ad, and I put it in an Images folder, which shows up right here. Here's our BMC eating, you're right, eating BMW's breakfast. So here's our ad. Um, and I place it. The reason you place a graphic in InDesign is, for those of you who are not familiar with InDesign, InDesign is a layout program that handles text and handles graphics. All of the graphics you place in InDesign need to be linked to the original graphic. It doesn't embed them. It places them and says, I got this graphic. It's over there. When I need to refer to it, I'll look over there for it. It's not embedded. And that makes a very, um, it creates a smaller file size. And you can update your graphic um, easily. So let me just place this ad here so we can look at it. So here's our original ad. And you know what? So here's our original ad. And it measures 13 and an eighth by 8 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to go back and change my, go back to InDesign. Um, I'm going to go back to InDesign. I'm going to go to my document setup. And what did I say? 13 and an eighth by 8 and 3 quarters. OK? So I'm changing my ad so it's proportionate. You all follow that? And up here in the upper left corner is what's called a reference point. And what you'll notice is, is that my ad, if I use my black arrow, my selection tool, and I click on my graphic, you'll notice it tells me where it's located on the page based on the upper left corner reference point. All right, y'all following me? Slow me down if I'm going too fast. 
I don't want to bore you, but I don't want to overwhelm you, all right? So if I just type 00, zero it puts my ad in the upper left corner. Yeah, you all get that, okay. I've done something, I'm gonna save my document right now. Always leave the suffix .indd, which tells your computer what type of file you're working in. And I'm gonna call this my um, Jaguar ad, not BMW. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'll save it in my images folder for the moment. There we go. Now, what you might wanna do is this, it's up to you. Um, if I go into Photoshop, if you are comfortable in Photoshop, Paul's going, thank God she's showing me Photoshop, right? Aren't you thanking me right now? You're still gonna have to do it in InDesign though. Okay, I can go to Photoshop, I can open my ad, I can locate it, and what I can do is this, just because I think ultimately it might be easier for you to work more quickly. So I'm opening my Jaguar ad, or I'm trying to, and in Photoshop, if you're not familiar with Photoshop, you might start tinkering with it. Um, I can click anywhere on this background. It's going to choose anything within a 32 pixel color balance. Who's new to Photoshop? Nobody. Okay, then I'm going to do this really quick. He's like, yeah, see Vic, right? I, I know. Okay. So I'm selecting everything that's the background. I'm holding my shift key down and selecting the shadow. And I'm going here to my selection tool and I'm going to deselect this part here. That didn't work out so well. Deselect. Oh, come here, come here. I want to keep my bowl. And oh, look at that. Actually, that's going to serve me kind of well. So I'm just getting rid of stuff. What I'm trying to do is get rid of the background so I've got all these really clean elements to play with here. And that's pretty good. I'm going to duplicate my layer in case I screwed something up. This computer's slow. See my wheel here? Okay, let's duplicate the layer again. There we go. And deselect and delete the background, which is what I did. <coughs> there we go. Okay, and the reason I did that is I want to be able to play with these little elements separately without the background being distracting. Okay, y'all get that? And I'm just going to save this as not a JPEG image, but as a Photoshop document, which will keep my transparent background and save the document. All right, everybody follow that? And this way now, um, I'm going to create a new page in InDesign by just dragging <coughs> one down in the page panel and think of different ways to layer this ad. So, what was the headline you came up with? Who, who said it? What'd you say? BMWs for breakfast. Okay. So, Let's put all the elements of our ad here and let's create our grid layout. So again, we can go, we can also go to what's called um, master pages. <coughs> master pages is in the page panel and if I double click on the master page, whatever you put on a master page applies to all your pages. Okay? So in my page panel, I'm on the master page. If I go to layout, I go to margins and columns. I make this a four column um, grid here. I increase my gutters. I can choose also to create rows and I'll show you that in a minute, but here's my gutters. So now you notice this page has it, every page has it. So I can, let me place, I hit Command D, I'm gonna place the bowl of cereal. If I just click here, 
the reason why I separated all that out is right there. Here's my bowl of cereal. I'm holding my option key down and duplicating this. And now I've got my Jaguar symbol. It's not going to show up very well because everything's so low resolution. Holding my option key down. And if I hold my mouse down on that little donut shape, it's showing me everything that is outside of the box that has cropped my image. You get it? So I am holding my mouse down. I can just move this over because now I would just want to isolate out um, my Jaguar. Okay? Now, the reason why I did this is, and then there was one line of type, right? We don't know what it said, but there was one line of type that said something. So I'm going to make this text box. I'm going to make it my type box. So I'm going to select all. I'm going to go to type and I'm going to fill with placeholder text. So that was my one sentence. You know, follow what I did? So now if we come back to our original ad, I have everything, right? Okay. All right. And we don't want to ignore the fact that there's this rectangle like our placemat sitting behind our bowl of cereal or our bowl of berries and yogurt. Um, and calling attention to a clean white palette for our Jaguar in the image. Now I can go back to page two and let's look at our different layout. So what I can do is this. I can play with this text. Let's say I make it um, Helvetica condensed if it's Helvetica bold condensed. Does that show up right there? There we go. And I can just use my, um, this isn't a way necessarily to increase the fonts properly, but it's just a way to um, increase the size of the font and that box, right? The other thing I can do is go to Object Fitting, fit my frame to the content, see what it did, and I can hold my Command Option Shift key down and, sorry, my Command Option Shift key down and <coughs> scale this box of type, right? And I could do it any which way. I can also select my type right here, increase the size of my type, my text box, and I can incrementally go up here to the A, to the Character Formatting Control Panel, which can also be found under Type and Character Panel. Same thing. That A is the same thing as this panel, and I can just incrementally increase my type that way. Yep, you all follow me? Okay, so, so here's one way. I can have my headline across the page, and I can make my Jaguar, I'm hitting Command, Option, Shift. I can increase, let me do that again. you got to press it down. So you have all three keys pressed down, and I can put my Jaguar here, and I can take my bowl of cereal, and I can decrease the scale of it. Notice I'm just... Let me make that fit. Let me do that again. Command, Option, Shift. You've got to hold them all down at the same time to scale it down that way. <clears throat> but maybe what I decide is, um, I don't know. I was looking for an O to replace it with. But you can see how you can scale all the elements. So right now, here's my car. My car is um, taking up only my two-column grid. My serial, I don't have enough elements in this ad to make it really very exciting. I can make my um, headline now four columns now, but I can make it two columns wide. I can take my car and I can go to my flip horizontal, flop it, and have it facing into the ad from the other side of the page, right? And I can take my text and make it, it won't be one column wide because the words are too long but I can break them line by line by taking my type tool and hitting a soft return. You're all familiar with soft returns? Soft return is a shift return to break the line of type and shift return, break the line of type. And now I've got my type like this. I can take my type, select all, command A, and change the letting. 
this baseline here to that baseline there is called letting. Who knows why it's called letting? Chris. They used to use like in real type, like when they would have to have the little characters in the level and whatnot, they would have to insert these little pieces in between the letters to create the space from line to line. Lead bars? Lead bars. You're absolutely correct, Chris. Thank you. That was perfect. Long ago, in the older <coughs> days, you can't even see pictures of it anymore. I thought I could Google it. I've seen pictures in books. Does it really exist if you can't Google it? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. I just didn't Google well. So, um, let me see if I can find a picture for you. Uh, There's a guy holding the bars right there. Yeah, the bars here. Or the bars of lead. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I just want to show you how it was set. So, in, so I went to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. one day. Here, let's see how that looks. So, I went to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., and they were pouring the lead into these little molds that shape the letter. So... Type used to be character by character. And each character was referred to as a sort. You ever heard that? You ever heard anybody say, I'm out of sorts? Yeah. I'm out of letters. That's what it really meant, seriously. Crazy, right? And lines of type were set with the height of a letter, which is measured in point sizes. And those look like they're made out of wood, actually. Um, these are um, these are cast out of lead, and to create the space from here to there, they would add the bars of lead. Chris was absolutely spot on with that. So um, the terms that you're using in InDesign here, from baseline to baseline, is still referred to. Look at my cursor, leading, not leading, but leading, and that's an old fashion term in your computer software, right? Cool. So if you change your letting, you have to select all your type, and then you control your letting. You automatically, in InDesign, will have what's called default letting. Default letting is 120% of the size of your type. So if your type is 100 points, your default letting, so if I go to auto letting, it's going to be 120 points. See that? You never want auto letting. As a designer, you always control your letting. So again, if you want your letting to sit on top of each other tighter and tighter, it's a design thing. And right now, it looks kind of cool. One of the things we have control over is we can overlap our letters if we want, right? So you can decide how to set up your letting. You could decide if your line of type, this is called um, Greeking, by the way, what I fill this with. Let me grab our type. So here's our type. We're going to put our type box in our grid right there. I'm going to fit. I'm going to go to object fitting. This is what I'm doing with my shortcut key. And I'm fitting my frame to my content of my type. And here is my body copy. And then I can choose whether my body copy is, let me just fill this right now with um, placeholder text. Or Right here, there's an overflow box. If I click on it, I can create another column of text right here. And you'll notice that my text will flow into my next text box. And that's two columns of text side by side. This is a four-column grid layout we've created here. OK? And as a designer, you always have the opportunity to decide when you're going to break your grid. You might decide that your um, bowl of cereal sits right here. <coughs> you might decide that the car is right here, or you want to blow up the car even more. Not literally, but there you go. And if you view the ad, we've taken all the same elements, except a little bit more text, and created our ad here, right? The only thing we're, oh, we're missing the, we're missing our logo. We're missing our um, Jaguar logo. So let's see where I place that. 
Uh, it was probably behind the car, right? There it is. And so maybe we decide it's right here. And again, we have to consider the way the Jaguar faces on the ad. Like, I can't arbitrarily flip my Jaguar. Come back. Right? I can't flip the logo. I have to think about what the Jaguar is going to eat or look at. So maybe what our Jaguar is, if I was really, if I had a really silly sense of humor, maybe my Jaguar, um, you can flip the car. I can flip the car. Actually, I, the car's already flipped, honestly. Um, there we go. It went off my screen. Hang on. There we go. And, you know, they made the car really, really small, right? But, you know, maybe my Jaguar's eating BMWs for breakfast, right? Um, but you can see how I'm playing with this. What I, what I mostly wanted you to do is see how by changing <coughs> proportion and scale and using a grid layout, you can create order on a page and create different ways to lay this out. Um, and I could, I don't have to make this, um, I don't have to use all my columns. In other words, um, let me shrink this down a little bit. I don't want to get too crazy demoing this. Um, oops, right here with my car. And again, if we look at this in preview mode, you can see that's, you know, we're talking about positive, negative space, white space here. So I want you to play with your layouts. I want you to try sketching it different ways. Um, find an ad that gives you elements to work with. Um, I would really love to see you thumbnail them and to play with them. Okay, is that kind of clear for everybody? Does it have to be? Because I already did this, I mean, and my ad didn't have like a headline. Um, I think I'd love to see you have a headline. So take it, add a headline to it, and do it some more. How's that? I know you're going to kill me, right? You're trying to be ahead of it all. But um, what I do want to show you, so you all get comfortable working in, in design, is so I've created this um, layout here, right? And, you know, I can also, certainly, I can also hold my Option key down, just so you guys know duplicate my page in my page panel. There's my next page. And now I can um, take my breakfast, my BMW breakfast, again, scale it. I can scale it with a percentage or I hit Command, Option, Shift. I can make this bleed off the page. I can put um, this down here. Um, let me delete that text box. There we go. There we go. And you can see right here, there. So I didn't have to recreate the page again and again, right? And here, maybe what I do is I decide that my headline's way too big and I'm being obnoxious. And that's all I need right there. So you can see how easily, once you get all your four elements or however many elements there are, then you're just, then you're doing that little Italian video and you can play opera for yourselves, right? So any questions about grid layouts and moving this around? Okay, then let me just show you one more thing that I want you all to get really good at, which is this. Save your document, save it in a way that you'll understand the name. Then, when you are done, so let's say, um, hang on one more second. I have no idea what this is. Hopefully it's okay to look at, right?
Okay, so let's just, I hate when this happens, you're doing something and there we go. Mobile link is off. Easily open your files. Access. Okay. It's too fussy for me. All right, this is our thumbnail. Let's just call it our thumbnail. So I'm taking a screen capture. Command Shift 4. If you don't know how to take a screen capture on a Mac, that's my screen capture. So I'm closing this. And so I can drag down another page here. And here I can go to Command D, File Place. Here's um, my screen capture on my desktop. I find my screen capture on my desktop. And let's call these my thumbnails. And you can place your multiple thumbnails you created here. Okay? Make sure your name's on it, so forth. There's my thumbnails. Okay? And now I've got my ad, and then I've got my variety of layouts for my ad. Okay? So I'm going to save my document. I am now going to package my document so my fonts and my graphics come together. Go to File, Package. Oh, one more thing. I keep getting this terrible spinning wheel. If you go back to the assignment page here, there are questions you need to answer for this. You need to discuss the layout. No, is it this one? There was no discussion of the layout? The hierarchy? No, maybe I looked ahead to some. Oh, no, I'm, I'm on the other project. Okay, so we're good. So once you've done all this and you've done a few different layouts, then you're going to go to File Package. You've got your thumbnails, you've got your ad. If you have anything missing, locate it and relink it. The way you relink it is there's a links panel. If there's something missing, it'll have a yellow warning sign or a red sign. And you go back to this link and you look for it. You highlight it, you say, let me link it. You click on the link, it says, where is it? I locate this, I open it. I relink it, it's updated. Okay? Everybody follow that? Then save your document again, go to File Package. Nothing's missing, nothing's modified. The yellow symbol means it's in RGB color, that's okay for this. You click Package. This says give me instructions, you can ignore it. Um, then it takes the name of your document and it adds the word folder to it. I always give something a date just because I don't want to lose track of what version I'm on. And I'm going to put this on my desktop. Notice what happens here. If I click include a PDF print, it doesn't do this in the old versions, by the way, um, Paul. I don't think so. I don't remember it does. I don't believe it does. I don't, yeah, I don't think it does. And you want to copy your fonts, copy your graphics, copy your package, save an IDML file, which would be saving to an older version, and package, that says don't steal the fonts. You say OK. Overset, um, you're not going to have overset. Overset, you need to fix. By the way, I'm not going to do it just for time. Overset means I have too much text in that text box. That's what it means. Don't do this. Go fix it. OK. And what I'm going to show you is I have a package. And if I close my document, if I close my document and let me minimize this, and I go to my desktop, I'll have a folder called my Jaguar folder. In my Jaguar folder, it duplicated my InDesign document. It added the ad that I used, the, the PNG file, the one we found. Oh no, the PNG was my screen capture. It added the Photoshop one that we cleaned up. And um, it duplicated my InDesign document and it created for me a PDF file which would be ready for you to upload. Page one, page two, three, four. Yeah. One well, thing to keep in mind is that it's a print PDF and if you're using for some reason an interactive PDF, you have to export it separately and then overwrite the print PDF that it packaged. Yes, but I don't think we do anything interactive in here. So yes. Okay. Yes. I run into that problem. Right? Yes. Okay. So this is the file that you would upload. Okay? Is that clear? It really shouldn't be too tough. Is Are there questions for anybody? Yeah, Brenda. When is this due? When's it due?
Um, you actually have a, a pretty fair amount of time. I'd love for you to kind of get it out of your way because I don't think it's going to be a hard one. But it's due, we're in week three, so it's due Monday um, of week four at 9 a.m., it says. Okay? But you know what? Try and knock it out by the time you get here on Thursday because Thursday we're going to start a new project. Any, any other questions? Uh, that second quiz is due tomorrow, is it, right? Well, let's take a look. Uh, activities. Quizzes. There you go. Wednesday. 11 p.m. You get two attempts. Does anybody know how, many, how much space between your two attempts? It doesn't have to be. You can take it right after. Okay, one after the other. All right, see you guys on Thursday. Thank you.